Hey there, I'm Bill and welcome to Project Build, where today I'm going to be showing you how to turn 2x6s and plexiglass into these frosted glass doors. In my last video I made these small closet built-ins and today I want to finish the closet by making frosted glass bypass doors here. So the doors are made out of 2x6s and when you go to the store to get these, take your time and try to get ones as straight as you possibly can. So some of the ones that I use weren't that straight and it caused me problems down the road and I would have been better off just taking a little bit more time at the store and getting some straighter ones. All right, let's make us some doors. I started by running the two by sixes through my planer, making a 1 16th inch pass on both sides of the board. This bow smooths the rough faces and brings the total thickness of the boards down from one and a half inches to one and three eighths inches, which is the standard thickness of an interior door. If you don't have a planer, you can probably skip this step and still use the boards as they are at one and a half inches. You'll just have to modify a few steps of the build, which I'll point out as we go. I took the plain boards to the miter saw, first squaring one end of the board, and then cutting two styles for the vertical part of the door and five rails for the horizontal pieces of the door. These lengths will vary based on the width and height of the doors that you're making. I took all the pieces to the table saw and trimmed a quarter inch off one side, and then I trimmed the other edge to bring the total width of all the door pieces to five inches. Then I sanded both of the trimmed edges on all the pieces to remove any saw marks left over from the table saw. I drilled three pocket holes in both ends of the back of each horizontal rail using the 1 and 3 8 inch settings. Now if you didn't plane your pieces, you'd use the one and a half inch settings here. So in total for each door, I have two styles and five rails. With all the pieces cut, I clamped one end of the door together and drove in two inch pocket screws to hold it together. If you didn't plane your pieces, you'd use longer screws here. As a note, if your styles are warped, make sure to lay them out so that they bow in the same direction. A slightly bowed door is still usable, but a twisted door is no good. And then I flipped the door around and screwed together the other end. To locate the middle three rails, I marked the center on each of them and then marked on the door to evenly space them. These marks were calculated by taking the distance between the middle of the top and bottom rails and dividing by the number of glass panels, which in my case is four. Getting these measurements right can be confusing, so it's always good to check to make sure that they're evenly spaced. Then I clamped and screwed in the center rail as well as the two remaining rails. I needed to cut a rabbit on the back of the door to inset the frosted glass panels, so I used a rabbit bit set to a quarter of an inch deep to cut a rabbit groove on the inside of the door pieces. As this is a large diameter bit, you'll really need to slow the router down. I don't recommend using a bit this large with a router that doesn't have a variable speed control. I made several shallow passes until there was 5 eighths of an inch left on the front part of the door which will inset the 1 8 inch frosted glass panel directly in the center of the door. Unfortunately, router bits leave rounded inside corner, so we'll need to cut these out square so that the panel can fit down into the door. And to do this, I used a straight edge to continue the lines to the corner, and I'm using a plunge cut blade on an oscillating tool to cut these out. This is a bit crude, and the proper way to do it would be with chisels, but I've got 16 of these corners to cut on every door, so this saved a lot of time and actually worked surprisingly well. I still had to clean up the last bit with the chisel, but doing it this way saved me a ton of time. 100 gold stars for anyone that knows an even faster way to cut these square inside corners. Some light sanding, and I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. If you were going to make a door that looked good on both sides and not just the front, you need to fill the pocket holes. To plug the holes, I put some wood glue in the hole, then inserted a 3 8 inch wooden dowel. Next I cut off the dowel with a flush cut saw, and then spread some wood filler on top, and when it was dry, I sanded it smooth. The doors are fully built at this point and need to be prepped for paint. Alternatively, you could choose to stain them instead of paint, and that would look great too. I started prepping for paint by applying a layer of wood filler to all the knots and seams between the rails and styles on the front and sides of the door. When that was dry, I sanded it all smooth with my orbital sander. If you didn't plane your doors, you'll likely have a lot more sanding to do here. I also sanded the back quickly just so it would take paint better. After sanding, I added a small round over to all the front and side edges of the door using my router. I also had to sand the inside corners by hand to round them over as the router can't get all the way to the corner. Next I applied two coats of a shellac based primer over all the knots to seal them as otherwise they would quickly show through the paint. 
And then I use the normal primer on the back of the door. When that dried, I flipped the door over and lightly sanded all of the shellac prime knots smooth and then primed the whole front of the door as well. Then I painted one coat of white semi-gloss paint on the back of the door and two coats on the front where it will be visible. Now I needed to make the frosted glass panels. You can use plexiglass or polycarbonate as it's stronger and often cheaper than glass. So cut a large sheet down to the size of the panels I needed. I started by using a long straight edge to mark a line across the plexiglass. And the key to smoothly cutting it is to clamp it down and support both sides of the cut so that it can't jump and move around. Then I cut down the middle of my marked line using a metal cutting blade on my jigsaw, making sure that the saw oscillation was turned off and using a moderate blade speed. I cut about halfway through the sheet and then came back from the other side to finish the cut. And then I cut this smaller piece into my panels using some weight from around the shop to act as clamps. There are several methods to frosting plexiglass, each with pros and cons. And after testing a bunch of them, I decided to use a static cling film. I laid one of my panels down, traced it, and then cut it out. I removed one side of the protective covering on the plexiglass and then sprayed a lot of soapy water on it. Next I removed the backing of the film and positioned it on the panel. I used a squeegee to push out the remaining water from under the film. The film moves around at first, but becomes more adhesive as the water is pushed out from underneath. You likely won't be able to get all the water out, and it will look like little bubbles under the film. You can push these out later with something stiff like a credit card, but the bubbles should continue to evaporate away over time. Now it's time to attach the panels to the door. If you were going to be able to see both sides of the door, you'd want to make wooden strips to attach to the back of the door and hold the panel in here. As only the front of my doors will be visible, I marked the line at the thickness of the panel, then marked the center of the nylon washer I'm using to hold the panels in place, center punched, and pre-drilled it. Once all the holes were drilled, I removed the remaining plastic on the back of the plexiglass and set it in place with the frosted film towards the front. Then I used pan head screws to hold the washers in place, pressing down as I tightened to make sure the washers were holding the panel down tight. Hi there! So we're done with the doors at this point, now we just need to mount them in place. The bypass door track I have was a little too long, so I cut it down first using a hacksaw. That was too much work, so I finished it with my Dremel. It probably would have been easiest to use a metal cutting blade on my jigsaw, I just didn't think of that till after. Then I put the track up into place and marked the holes. I pre-drilled them and mounted the track in place using long cabinet screws, as the screws that came with the track weren't long enough to reach to the header stud above the door frame. Next, I mounted the door hangers, marking the top of each slot, drilling out each hole, and screwing them into place. I didn't love the look of the aluminum track being exposed, so I made a trim piece to cover out of quarter inch plywood. I applied some construction adhesive to the front of the track and then clamped the trim piece in place, but it quickly became apparent that the construction adhesive wasn't going to hold very well, so I pre-drilled for some small sheet metal screws and then used a larger bit to recess the head of the screw. I screwed the trim in place and then put wood filler over the heads of the screws. I also caulked the gaps around the trim and then painted everything once it was dry. Once the trim was up, I lifted the doors up and hooked them on the track, starting with the back door and then the front. The last thing to do is to mount the door guide on the floor. I moved both doors to one side, positioned the guide, and then marked the holes. Then I pre-drilled and screwed the guide into place. All right, we are done making the frosted glass doors. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and check out my other builds because you'll likely enjoy those too. And if you have any questions or thoughts about the build, let me know down in the comments. And if you're not already subscribed, consider doing that. Oh, and one more thing. Go build yourself.